actually, you know, had a language for community until I lived abroad. And by the same token, I never knew what alone was until I lived abroad. Because from the minute I was born, remember what I said, there is a whole choir of community of spirit and ancestors, of sibling already waiting for you. Mothers, fathers, you know, you name it. Everything is collective. So I never ever felt alone. And I never ever actually slept alone until I got to the West. And all of a sudden it's like you feel this energy and you go, that's bizarre. I feel kind of strange. And you start to go a little crazy. And um, if anybody speaks French here, they call it the cockroach. Anybody know that feeling? That you feel the kappa. It's, it's, it's kind of like this infestation that you cannot explain, but something is making you crazy. Yeah? And so, um, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a very graphic word. <laughs> um, but it is this feeling that you're realizing that things are breaking inside of you and you don't even have um, an understanding of what is going on. And, and it is from that place that I thought, whoa, maybe my elders intend to kill me. Okay, so I have not always been a good child. But let's, 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 let's renegotiate this, okay? I, I don't really deserve to die like this. So I sent this letter to them you know, about all the things. And they're like, what is she talking about? And it wasn't until I talked to a French person that said, oh, you're feeling the cockroach. Oh, cockroach, okay. okay. Yeah. Um, because community is so vital to everyone. The presence or the lack of presence of community impact our life in such a way that we can end up having the capacity to connect with other people or not connect with them at all. Because we are community creatures. We are. Don't tell me that you are not. If you are not a community being, you would have fallen into an island that only you live and you would have never had a contact with any human being. But most of our life, we are trying to figure out our relationship to our community. How do we belong and how do we not belong? How were we welcome and how were we not welcome? Where is that community that sang that asked for us to be here. Why am I going so through so much suffering and going through it alone? Isn't there supposed to be someone out there to say, hey, I know what you're going through and I know it's not right and I want to let you know that I'm here. And so when we look around in times of challenges and the community is not there. We pull further and further away because their presence or their speaking up on silence is a loud message that we receive. And our children speak it out very well. But instead of us looking at it and saying the community is not doing its job, we blame our children for being problem children. They're not good children. They weren't brought up right. Now whose idea was it that the children were supposed to come into only one family? 
Are they only going to service that one family? I haven't seen any one child only serve the whole family. They have served more than their family. They serve the community and they serve struggle with community comes because when the industrial age came, we were told that the family ties were not as important. And it's okay to walk away from your family. And so family uh, community then became mobile and later on became disposable. And so as a result, we go to this community, we use them when we finish, you toss them and then you go look for another community. But it still does not answer to this void that we feel inside when we are alone at night and no one else is there. That silence that we feel, that call that comes uh, over. Good. <laughs> I know how to do it. Um, that call that over, uh, comes over you, <coughs> that you cannot explain to a single human, and yet you feel it. It is because we're missing that warmth, that human touch. And sometimes, all you want is someone to just look at you and say, you are okay. And things are okay. It's not as magical. Sometimes it's a touch. When you're standing there at the crossroads, that someone dares to reach out and just hold that hand, that makes things okay. So sometimes we don't know. When we walk by past someone, to say hello to them may change their day drastically. To notice something good about them and to reflect it back to them can be that turning moment for them. But often we don't think about it in those terms. We are just too busy to stop and say hello to someone. And, um, and so those are the things that human being need. We are not machines. We can create all the machineries, iPod and iPhone and whatever, but there is still that basic human desire. Can you be human with me? Can you for once? Just radiate your warmth toward me. And that's what really community is about. It's not about something grandiose that we look very far. When we are in community, and the community values us, we shine. And when we shine, we dare others to shine as well. A community cannot be a community without their people. Where is the gift? But by inviting, but by invoking that innate gift that we are each born with, it creates tons of gems everywhere that we all can benefit from. And so that's why to be able to have longevity, we need community. Because you cannot be well without your community. It's impossible. Some people die because they're lonely. And it's not because <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it's not because something inside of them went wrong, but it is because that human in them has stopped living. <coughs> so, so far so good? Yeah? Relationships.
I really believe that in the old days we we knew how to do relationship prosperity. We really did. But somewhere along the line, we started to do relation trips. <laughs> So when I'm going crazy on some crazy trip, I'll take you on my trip. I don't even know where I pick you up from and where I'm talking to. But here you are in my life. You think that you're going on some wonderful ride. But I was just looking for someone to mess with. Yeah? And so the absence of community has left everybody homeless. And more importantly, has created such an invisibility that it has created this other form of existence that makes us feel that we are allowed to do whatever we want. I know in America we say that, okay? We are American, we can. But that's not true. Um, when you live in a community and you are relating to others there are certain things that you must live by just like they need to live by which is again being human our common humanity is what makes things work if I know how to live respectfully and to respect you there is a platform there already. But it is because I know you. And by knowing you, I value who you are. And I value you, uh, uh, who you are because I know that you are not just an empty vessel coming into this world for me to be putting my junk into. There is more to who you are than what I can see. But what I can see, I know is already pretty good. And because other people in the community are also watching, there are things that I would not dare to do to you than when I live as an anonymous person. Because when the community is not there, all the bets are off. And it's true. And I noticed it even with the people in Africa who have um, 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 grown in communities. It's as if when they get out of that plane and they land in the West, some demon overtake them. And they start to live there and you go, really? Is that how you would live in your village? There's no way on hell you're going to behave like this and get away with it. There's no way. But here it is. Not because there's no community to keep them accountable. Now they feel like they're permitted anything. It's insane. Some people digress to being teenagers. And I'm going, really? You really going to go there again? Community makes us accountable. And that accountability is important for the relationship. You see, in my uh, village, when I was growing up, you didn't choose your partner. And maybe they knew that you were insane enough that whatever partner you would take would be equally as insane and it wouldn't work you anyway. Um, and so, the elders had the uh, our responsibility of choosing the partners. I remember when I first said it in my um, uh, English class that um, I didn't know my husband before we were married. And in fact, he was not even there at the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I might have to chop it off. 
<laughs> she thought I was the craziest loon that ever came to her class because I had those crazy stories and she would look at me and she'd go, really? I said, yeah. Don't you do it too? She go, no. We don't sit in circle and take dump and talk. Oh, I thought it was everywhere like that. Yeah. Um, and so when the elders choose a partner for you, it's on the basis that A, they have watched you grow. B, they know the kind of gifts that you are bringing. C, they know the temper that you have. <laughs> and, and D, if it doesn't work out, they're responsible. That's the part I like best. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to them any time of the day and say, look, the steward you picked up for me, <laughs> he is not doing it. <laughs> it's true, and they will go to work. No, it's like out here, we go to wedding, and when people are a couple, we go to their house, we eat, we have a great time. But when the trouble hit, everybody disappears. It's like, wait a minute, the party is still on. Where are you going? <laughs> you know, this is the time to really show up. And, and in my tradition, they will tell you, if you show up in somebody's wedding, when there's trouble, you must be one of the first to show up. Because the uh, trouble that the couple is experiencing may seem like it's a struggle between two people. Whereas it might actually be a virus that is within the fabric of the community coming through these two people. And so when we fail to show up, then with this virus actually becomes stronger and becomes rampant. And then we wonder why relationships are not working. And then we wonder why we're ill all the time. A lot of people are in the hospital not because this body has stopped functioning, but because their relationships are not working well. A lot of us are broken because our relationships are not working well. And so it's not, it's not the responsibility of two people to make their relationship well. It is the responsibility of the community. When we find value in two people relationship and can invest the right kind of energy to support them, that per, uh, couple is going to be well. And we can all live to be proud of the work that we have done. But because we feel like a relationship is a private matter, we often run away when there is any such a thing as a problem. Oh my God, it started. Oh yeah, really? So you heard about it. Now what are you going to do about it? We need to stop talking behind them and show up. Sometimes that's all they need for people to even hear the kind of struggle they're going through. And to say, you know, you're right. I feel the same stinky thing in my relationship, but I didn't dare to say it. But now you have given me a language that I can use to describe what is going on. There's something we do called the ash circle. It's a very interesting but very tedious process. <laughs> the ash circle is a non-courtroom, non-judgmental 
way of dealing with relationship crisis. And often people are amazed that what this couple brought seemed to be like an alien. By the time they're done examining this alien, they actually recognize this alien in their own relationship. And they go, wow, this was a community problem. Yeah, duh. <laughs> By virtue of living in a community, whatever problem he experienced is a part of a community. It's not going to come from somewhere else. Mars is not going to show up and show it to you. It's right here. And so when you have a problem, maybe you should think again. Sometimes the land itself is not viable for relationship. It's true. I'm not going to get you about it.